Hey, there we go. I am live, or at least I believe I am. Uh, Bobby, Jono, you're there. Someone confirmed for me that I'm live and can be heard <laughs> and everything is working dandy because it just went all a little bit funny on me then. Oh, lovely cup of tea. There we go. Oh, la, 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 la. Right, let's see what's going on. Let's see what's going on. So, hello, Bobby. Hello, Jono. You guys are all right. It's, uh, you're alive and sound good. Yes, I do. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, thank you for asking about my holiday as well. We had a tremendous time. Thank you very much. Um, it's just such a shame to be back. <laughs> hey, Wilfredo. Thank you very much. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm all rested and recuperated uh, after a fashion. Uh, we had a, a long overnight flight and I didn't sleep at all on the overnight flight, so the day we returned, I feel like the travel home just sort of undid loads of the good work that the um, that the holiday had done. Hey there, Real Zim, how you doing, man? So, but aside from that, yeah, really tremendous time. Thank you for asking, Bobby. Uh, thank you for the warm welcome back. Um, but uh, I then came crashing down to reality yesterday. I had to start thinking about work again at 8.30 in the morning. And that was not cool, man. So I'm glad I, I'm glad I can get back into this routine as well and have some, you know, man-child playtime stuff. Hey, Eric. How you doing, man? Uh, yeah, really good, thanks. Great great two weeks off. Um, although very active, very active holiday. Um, with, with it being South Africa and a bit more of an exotic location uh, for us, we, uh, we spent a lot of time getting out and about, seeing the... Uh, Seeing the sights and sounds of Cape Town as much as we, we did some beach days. And we had a little bit of bad weather right in the middle. It was very windy and then a little bit of a storm. Um, but outside of that, yeah, wonderful time. Thanks for asking, Chief. Wonderful time. Well, every, everyone's here lined up, ready to go right at the outset today. That's uh, really lovely to see. Thank you so very much. Sabretooth has, <laughs> has just taken a dive. <laughs> did you see that? Sabretooth. <laughs> This is a great figure, by the way, guys. I've been really enjoying playing around with this one. What are you doing, son? Come on. Get back up here fighting your Wolverine. There you go. Just, just turn that back up a little bit there like that. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so, Sabretooth obviously objected to something that I said just then. But who cares? It's Sabretooth. Do you know what I mean? Right, well, listen to your friend Chris, folks. Oh, hang on. Let me do the... Uh, where's my button? Where's my button? Listen to your friend Chris. It's that time of the week again. Um, and even though I've got th like three weeks worth of uh, action figure and collectible related news, uh, I I've just plucked a few kind of key things out. And most of it is actually really recent because I kind of got back into the rhythm of real life this weekend. Um, and th there was already enough going on that I just thought I'd pick up where I left off and keep it nice and contemporary, you know. Uh, so if you read the description, you know there's a few things I'm planning on talking about today. Uh, but we'll see how many tangents and cul-de-sacs and random corners we end up in. Uh, oh, what's Eric saying there? Let's uh, just see. So have I said hello to everyone who, who I've seen? So hi, Bobby. Hi, Jono. Hello, Wilfredo. The Real Zim and Charlock. Is has uh, anyone sounded off that I've not acknowledged as of yet? Apologies if not. Sound off again and I'll, I'll give you a quick hello. Uh, and Eric is saying... I love that saber tooth. I did cut a bit of a half circle out of the back of the head to give you more upward range. Yes! <laughs> Have you... Have you already watched my review? <laughs> yeah, that's a real... Um, that's a real... Uh, this side, there you go. That, uh, that limit of the upward is a real problem because with your saber tooth, you kind of want, like, uh, you know, like... Grrr, sort of forward motion. And you can do it with, with uh, the Wolverine figures... I had uh, my Wolverine out. In fact, my Marvel Legends box is here because I've been playing around with them today. Where are you, Wolverine? Come on. Here we are, folks. Never forget. Never forget. Um, if you know, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's absolutely a great point, Eric. Can I talk about that <laughs> in, the, in the review that I've partially recorded so far? Oh, hang on. Now I've messed around with his feet. And there we go, he's back. 
Uh, right then, so I've got planned content, as always, uh, that you can listen to your friend Chris talk about. And of course, I will encourage you to uh, get into chat and share your thoughts and comments on the stuff that I'll be sharing my thoughts and comments about. Uh, or if you're watching this after the fact, you are also welcome to go and avail yourselves of the comments function uh, and share your thoughts too. Because uh, I love hearing what, what the folks who hang around in these parts, the Mod Extra Games and Collectibles viewing community have got to say. Um, but as always, a few caveats. I've just kind of picked out a few little key bits um, that have caught my eye. It's things that I'm interested in or generated thoughts or things to comment on. Um, so, for example, I want to do a bit of Marvel Legends chat today, but I'm not doing the whole stream. It's not going to be like a, you know, I'd have done a, a full stream review video like I do with G.I. Joe Classified otherwise. Um, so it's just a few bits that have caught my eye. Although everyone's talking about the Sabretooth. Here we go. Uh, Jono says, yeah, that Sabretooth is epic. Not happy it came in a two-pack with Wolverine. I have zero interest in. Uh, I entirely agree, Jono. Um, I've talked about this before, so for fear of repeating myself to some folks, it that, that 50th uh, Wolverine 50th anniversary wave with all the two-packs, there were three figures, maybe four, that caught my eye. Uh, the Sabretooth, the Lilandra the um Quanon, uh evil ninja psylocke and one other what was the other one that caught my fancy i've forgotten what else is in the wave definitely those three though um but all three of those were spread across three double packs so hasbro have got one single 50 quid purchase out of me for the sabertooth and wolverine double pack because i absolutely was not passing up on the sabertooth but if they'd have done Sabretooth, Lilandra, and the Psylocke in three separate singles, like a card bat or whatever, then they'd have made 75 quid out of me. So I'm not, I'm not sure what the strategy is there. I'm not kind of... Does it work? Does it really actually work as a sales strategy to, to throw in less desirable or more... I mean, the only one that I feel is excusable is the, uh, uh, you know, the patch and... Uh, Grey Hulk one. Um, so, uh, I agree. I agree. But I pitched in on this one because I wanted the Sabretooth. And, you know, I'll make some use of that Wolverine here or there somehow. Um, but I definitely had no interest in that brood Wolverine. Uh, and I certainly had no interest in the weird, like, black ballet ju <laughs> jumpsuit version of, uh, of, the, uh, of the Wolverine in the other one. What was the other figure in those... I don't know, it, may, it might be Angel, actually. Am I considering Angel in the same wave, even though technically it's not? That's possibly the case. Um, oh, sorry, that was a bit of a very British tea slurp on the microphone for you there. Apologies for that. Um, but I would be curious to know whether it works, whether there are people out there who are dropping, you know, going, I really want Lilandra, for example, so I'm going to buy the double pack for Lilandra and... But I also really want Sabretooth, so I'm going to buy the double pack of Sabretooth and then end up dropping 100, you know, a ton rather than um, 50. I'm curious. Um, and on the live stream, which I'll come to actually, because that's uh, I want to talk about a few of the bits from the live stream, um, Dan Young did drop a little hint that there's another Wolverine on the way. Is it, <laughs> it made me laugh because I was watching the stream. I was like, oh, another Wolverine. Oh, another Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway we'll get to that bit let's uh let's get some chat going uh so uh jeff's with us hi jeff and jeff asks hey mon have you seen gi joe resolute i saw it for the first time the other day and it was pretty good especially the snake eyes and storm shadow scenes yes i have so gi joe resolute um i did correct me if i'm wrong but i think gi joe resolute was written by the comic book artist warren ellis who uh while i enjoy his work has had some uh, questionable personal life uh, stuff going on uh, last year or the year before um, so this is definitely uh, separating the man from the art a bit but um, yeah so I took an interest in it at that time because it was around the time I was reading stuff like Transmetropolitan by Warren Ellis and yeah I think it's pretty decent I think there's some ballsy moves in it the, the, you know the the early deaths and stuff um, the animation is not quite to my taste but it's good animation it's just a personal choice type thing and I think it's decent I would like to see more G.I. Joe related content of that nature uh, or of that tone you know it's a little bit more built and designed to appeal to a more mature audience um kind of acknowledging 
the age and attitudes and outlooks of the audience that does exist for the IP. Um, I'd certainly prefer that over the kind of live action movie stuff we've had in the last decade, but there you go. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, man, because uh, yeah, it's, it's probably out of everything what I, I would consider the, the best um, of recent years. And uh, then Jono, are we still on Sabretooth with Jono? Oh, <laughs> I'm thinking the secret Wolverine. Yeah, okay, the Dan uh, was banging on about during the live stream is the brown suit Wolverine. Otherwise, it is the Mafex reissue waiting game. Yeah, brown suit Wolverine, that's, yeah. I can't think of what else. Have they done, a, like, a classic um, first appearance Hulk one with the with the flat mask and the, the smaller black stripes? I don't, I can't remember. I can't remember. I do usually... So a, a large focus of my Marvel Legends collecting is X-Men related, although I have uh, re more recently... You can see Captain America at the back there. I have more recently started to expand and stray into some uh, kind of core Avengers-style stuff. Um, so I do tend to pay attention to X-Men related stuff, but I don't know... Uh, I mean, how many other Wolverine outfits can there be? <laughs> you know, anyway... Uh, and Jono says that's the show that got me into G.I. Joe oh really interesting interesting so I didn't see it as the three separate parts I watched a combined version it's on um, pretty sure it's on the Hasbro Pulse there's a playlist with all three installments on it uh, but yeah very good I, I think it's I think it's a great recommendation Jeff and uh, I'm very glad you asked alright should we do a bit of prepared content now uh, of course that doesn't mean we're we're restricted to the prepared content, but let's do it nonetheless. Um, so let's begin. Let's talk about the Marvel Legends stuff, actually, and Wolverine, because we've we've organically kind of stumbled into that spot. So I thought the stream from the Marvel Legends team uh, this week was pr probably one of the best they've done in a while. And I actually think the wave that they were showing off is probably one of the best waves they've done in a while. There has been a lot of Marvel Legends stuff of late, but uh, I, d I don't tend to collect Spider-Man related stuff, so I sort of, you know, just ignore that. Uh, the Iron Man retro card back wave uh, that they announced two or three weeks ago was decent enough. The She-Hulk kind of caught my eye, but it's not my cup of tea. Uh, but x men stuff and, and core Avengers-y type stuff definitely is my cup of tea. Um, so these really caught my eye. The uh, Wolverine here, the uh, which is based on the Joss Whedon, talking about people in media with uh, questionable <laughs> personal lives who've been cancelled. The Joss Whedon uh, astonishing X-Men uh, line we've, we've obviously already had the cyclops and the white queen so if that's your bag and that's kind of a display you want to put in i think that's a, a fair enough wolverine to do uh what what that does excite me about is the fact that there was because uh, kitty pride and cyclops were also key characters in that astonishing x-men run as well so it fills me with hope that we'll see perhaps a a new updated uh, Colossus and a new updated Kitty Pride, um, because I don't have a Colossus. That's another two pack that is kind of holding me, um, holding me at bay. Uh, plus, it's kind of hard to find over here in the UK. I don't know if it's they did a bit of a re-release recently, didn't they? And then um, just nice, a decent, really cool Kitty Pride. I'd love one on the new book uh, for sure. Because uh, those are the types of kind of core X Men, and while I picked up the White Queen, I picked up the Emma Frost uh, mostly again because it was what's available. It's very hard to get your hands on the older Emma Frost, um, and she was the astonishing one. I didn't really pick her up because I was trying to do an astonishing X Men thing. I picked her up because I wanted a White Queen, and it was just you know the one that's around. If they if they do a new one that's more kind of comic book accurate, that might be an instance where I do an upgrade kind of thing uh, and sell off the old one. Uh, but still really encouraged to see that because it means that they're, um, they're kind of opening up a few more kind of interesting avenues there. One thing that did make me chuckle though on the stream, uh, they said something like, oh, that's uh, that's three Astonishing X-Men team members in a year. That's not too bad. And Dan Young was like, uh, kind of, because that dude's like plugged in on Twitter and he knows that we're always like, finish a team! Finish a fucking team before we <laughs> move on. You know, all pecking his head to get uh, X Factors and X Forces finished and stuff. And they're starting, they're starting an astonishing X Men lineup. Um, so the Wolverine, uh, yeah, it was fun. It's a pass for me. I won't be picking one up. I'm, I'm quite happy with my, um, 
X Men animated one. That's I I feel like even with the uh, cell shading, I can use that as a comic book one as a cartoony one it suits both my purposes. Um, but it's still a nice Wolverine. It was a cool uniform and it was definitely a a, a cool comic book series. Um, and if they do a new Colossus to go along with that and a new Shadow Cat, I'll be very very happy. So that was the Wolverine. But the one that really caught my eye. Well, hang on. Let me just pause and see if anyone's got any chat comments about the uh wolverine here let's see uh oh so eric was just chiming in on our previous conversation about gi joe resolute agreed much easier to watch than the last few i've tuned into i think it's pretty easy to tell when that trio oh you're talking about the stream yeah when that trio is actually excited about the products they're showing off yeah that may well be the case because it was a very kind of comic book heavy wave and they just seem to have a little bit more of something about them for a change. And I noticed, uh, I keep is it Dwight or Dwayne, um, the dude who stands in the middle? Uh, more kind of eye contact with the camera, a little bit more presentation to his style. Uh, Dan and the other dude, whose name falls out of my head, uh, they they were still a little bit kind of furtive and wooden, but it was a, was a better stream. And I think also because I was more interested in the figures that were showing off, that tends to help, obviously, doesn't it? And uh, so, yeah, thanks, Eric. We're, we're of a like mind on, on the quality of the stream. Uh, John, John O here. To be fair, the Marvel Legends and Joe teams tend to be really into the products they design, unlike the Star Wars team, who are just the absolute worst. All right, I'll tell you what, Joe, we can circle back around to Black Series in a bit if you want, John O, to make that a whole little section of its own right. You'll notice that for as long as I've been doing Listen to Your Friend Chris, and certainly for as long as I've... I, I mean, I know I've only been live streaming it, for a short while but i did uh, pre-recorded versions i've barely ever spoke about a black series figure like you know the whole premise of me sharing thoughts and comments on things that caught my eye and there's just been nothing that's caught my eye i've got a boba fett i've got a darth vader i've got a han i've got a chewy i might one day get a leia and a luke i kind of think i might get one of the new retro carded um storm troopers and that's kind of it. I'm just sort of happy there because there's nothing, certainly none of the new Disney Plus expanded universe stuff is catching my eye at all. Um, and, you know, the design elements. And uh, Let's see what Eric's got to say about the Wolverine here. So, uh, Eric, that Wolverine will be the one I put on display with Sabretooth. I do wish he had the toe joint, though. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, the toe joint. If you guys, like, these, uh, for anyone watching uh, this after the fact they're not plants even even though they seem to be just like naturally barreling into um into subjects that I plan to talk about because i'm going to talk about the iron fist with the toe joint in a minute um yeah the toe joints is an interesting one i'll tell you who always has the toe joints is mcfarlane mcfarlane toys always have the toe joints but then they don't make articulated enough figures to make any proper use of them Anyway, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get bogged down getting salty about McFarlane. I started making a video, you guys know because you hang around with me quite a bit, <laughs> that I've, I've obviously been very salty about McFarlane toys and the DC multiverse line in particular of late. I started making a video and it was so neggy and I was proper negging it up that I was like, do you know what? I'm putting this one to bed and I actually trashed the footage that I took. I just binned it. I think I'm gonna redo it on the same theme but make it a bit less about me just laying into McFarlane and use it as more of a debate point for like a point of interest collector's thing because that's definitely not the type of channel I want to be. I've definitely got criticisms, but I don't want to be a guy just negging out all the time, which you'd be forgiven for thinking I am the way I bang on about how salty I am with McFarlane. Uh, the Star Wars, uh, let's see, next uh, comment. Oh, I think I've missed one out here. Let me just get my uh, little dash chat dashboard back up again. So, um, the Star Wars streams are unwatchable. That team triggers my anxiety. Oh, they don't trigger my anxiety. They trigger my rage. Uh, and then Jono says, uh, even when I was only collecting Black Series, their streams are so goddamn awful. Drinking game have taken a shot every time the clowns say, Fern. <laughs> oh, Jono doesn't like toe joints on his figures. Maybe he's getting them to stand so much harder. Yeah, I think um, on that point, my view would be that you need to be selective. So your um, your toe joint character choice should be Spider-Man, Wolverine, you know, ninjas, martial artists, or crouchy people. Um, and that's about it. So like McFarlane, for example, just swing back around that. Um, <laughs> some of the more... Um, 
martial artsy kind of characters like your Batmans and Robins of the world and what have you. Like I can see use for a toe joint, you know, doing a kind of gargoyle crouch. Although obviously you haven't got the leg articulation to do that. Um, so I think, yeah, toe joints are all right. Um, sometimes I like them, sometimes I don't. I'm sort of 50-50. It's, it's very uh, circumstance specific for me. Um, and that t it tends to be about the character and what type of things I'd want to do with the poses. So you, your Marvel Legends Spider-Man fans out there who are all about that. Um, there was one or two of them recently, wasn't there, that were toe-jointed Spider-Man figures. Uh, I can see why they were excited about that because Spider-Man is definitely the type of character you really kind of want to get you know, contorted into these, uh, these sort of mad you know, web-slinger, web New York swinger kind of stuff. Not that type of New York swinger, you know, literally on his on his webs. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's more of a selective. But sometimes I do look at them; as they make the feet look a bit too big and and kind of long and like canoe like. And I'm not into that. Um, and then let's see what Bobby's got here. So Bobby says the only Disney Plus action figure I would be looking forward to seeing would be a Bluey. Uh, but then again, Disney doesn't give credit. That's the BBC. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Dad! <laughs> Mom! I saw a tweet the other day. Someone tweeted, they said, uh, I've just watched an episode of Bluey in 20 minutes that's had a bigger emotional impact on me than Oppenheimer. <laughs> that goes to some heavy places, that Bluey. Uh, Eric's new scarlet spider yeah so i've not actually got that one lined up to talk about today and then connor's with us welcome connor great to see youtube's notifications are timely as ever oh don't worry about it mate you've only missed like 19 minutes and of that 19 minutes it's all been bollocks i've only just got to <laughs> talking about my prepared content but a pleasure to see you my man i watched your um nez video earlier today chief that was uh that was fun i enjoyed that very very gutted that i couldn't be there but as I said in the comment I left on your video, not that gutted. I mean, I was in South Africa. <laughs> Even with the disc waste. Nauseated face, yeah. Uh, YouTube can't help you if you're napping. Um, yes, a nap was had. Blessed be the dad nap. <laughs> Wilfredo is glad that I clarified that Spider-Man Swinger thing since he's from New York City. Yeah, and I mean, also to be clear, um, uh, I'm of the understanding that that uh, you know, swingers is not an exclusive. Um, yeah, you know, the other swinging is not an exclusive New York City type of activity. You know, um, you, you can find them, but everywhere there's a whole kind of swinging diaspora across the world. It's not exclusive to New York. <laughs> I'm getting off the rails. Right. Anyway, next prepared piece of content. The Carol Danvers, uh, well, Warbird, but I call it like classic OG uh, Marvel girl, uh, Carol Danvers, because that's where I'm from. Very pleased to see this one. Uh, I will be picking this one up. Uh, head swaps with the different hair. The new book, it's the new Black Widow book. So it's got the uh, butterfly joint in uh, and the, uh, the two core body joints and stuff which i'm really pleased to see i think it looks like a very exciting and dynamic figure and uh, i think she'll look just like a fab addition to this sort of little avengers main cast kind of thing that i've got going on uh but also i think you know from a guy who likes to do little scenes and take photos uh, miss marvel with some rogue you know miss marvel and some rogue i've got the um uh, i know there hasn't been a classic sort of chris claremont rogue but i've got the one hang on is it near the top oh i think i'm going in oh she's stuck on me storm there we go uh i've got that one uh which was from the pyro and rogue uh two pack which is kind of close enough and i reckon uh, maybe with a little bit of tinkering, might try my hand at a slight bit of custom. You can make that a bit more of a kind of Claremont era rogue. Um, the only thing would be the haircut because the uh, Claremont era rogue had that kind of shorter, more late seventies, early eighties style look. Uh, but anyway, yeah, the, you know, get her in with rogue. I think there's just some awesome opportunity. 
the classic look Iron Man. You could just do loads with that. So it's a great book. It's a great classic character. Um, there's a world of opportunity. I, I definitely think I'll be getting in on that. And my Black Widow has been one of my faves of uh, the last year-ish. And I, I enjoy the book. So um, this one will be a purchase for me. I think I, I like this. Uh, I like this Carol Danvers a great deal. And the uh, the photographer, what's his name? Someone remind me in chat if you know uh, who the the guy who does the photos for them is. Um, I think some of his <laughs> some of his work, some of the photographs he took with Carol Danvers are um, part of the. Uh, you know what sold me on it although i probably you know a, a warbird classic carol danvers i'd have gone for anyway that that's high on the list for me for for this little kind of avengers piece that i've decided to start adding to my ever-growing list of well my ever fluctuating list of things to be obsessed about and collecting um so yeah this one really stood out super pleased uh, and i think if i look at my, my notes oh yeah so of all of them this is the only one that hasn't had a pre-order date advertised um this one is uh and it's target exclusive over in the us so that's a bit of a shame uh so there you go there's carol danvers uh one that as always i'll have a quick swing through the chat to see what everyone else has got to say about carol danvers so uh jonathan redmond that miss marvel is awesome yeah entirely agree eric's on board as well fantastic looking figure right there and then let's see connor's pitched in they can't design a great new book like that and then keep using all the female ones now for all the new figures. I agree. They're, I think, uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, everybody knows my memory's not always the best, but um, I think on a stream, not too long back, they sort of said, look, we know. We know like this is older book and we got the new book and stuff. And it was something to do with how far in advance they'd done the tooling and, and kind of annual budgets and things. They sort of gave a bit of a corporate answer. Um, and that, I mean, that's fine. That is what it is, I suppose, on a practical level. But um, there's definitely been characters that have come out where I'm just like, oh, come on, get them on the new book, you know? Shooting the Galaxy. Thanks, Jono. That's the photographer who took the pictures. Cheers. Oh, hey, here we go. We've got another new arrival, folks. Everyone say hello to uh, Ronin Jim Ojisan. Uh, hello from Canada. Hello, Ronin. Thank you very much for swinging by. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please do feel free to chime in. We're uh, currently discussing the new Marvel Legends Carol Danvers um, that was on the stream the other night. Yeah, shooting the galaxy. That's double confirmation there. Uh, Erica Reeves with Connor. I say the same thing every time they put out a figure on a book that should be the new standard. Yeah, yeah. I think you won't find any arguments from anyone around these parts, I don't think, on that one for sure yeah it's such a shame when they do this knocks everything else out of the park yeah uh, yeah it does and there have definitely been let's let me think who what kind of um who have been some recent female marvel legends there's not been all that much that's caught my eye but it would have been nice to see um you know like they they plowed out that mystique the animated line you know the mystique in the animated line although they have got a mystique and destiny double pack that's been I don't think it's been confirmed, but it's been rumoured or leaked, hasn't it? So it's all, yeah, it's all a bit, um, um, it's all a bit disappointed. But yeah, they definitely, they said it was something to do with uh, machine tooling and parts and uh, reuse and how much annual budget they've got. So how much stuff they can make new um, tooling for and how much stuff they can't. Although that, that, the core of that body is probably... It's probably the Black Widow and the Yelena anyway, isn't it, more or less? Because uh, are the gloves and the boots painted on? If the gloves and the boots are painted on, then that's probably... Yeah, look at the feet as well. It's not um, it's not heeled boots, is it? Folks, I am waving my mouse over the picture as if you can all see what I'm, <laughs> what I'm highlighting here. I forgot I'm not doing my little zoom in iPad thing. Uh, well, Fredo agrees. She's a great looking finger. Ronin says, uh, Carol, I might pick up because I've had her sticker on our mod until it broke down. All oh, right, yeah, lovely sort of fam. Lady Hydra or whatever came out right around the same time as another new female a while back. Just couldn't understand it. Oh, no. Uh, was it Lady Hydra or was it, um, what's it called? Uh, Viper. Was it Viper? Maybe? 
No, I think you're right. I think it was Lady Hydra. Yeah, I mean, that looked like a really bland, boring figure. And stuff like, you know, they had um, Siren, didn't they? Um, not that long back. And it was around the time that the Black Widow stuff had been announced. I think I might, I might be getting my timings a bit mixed up. Um, I mean, for me, you know, I'd have certainly loved to have seen some better X-Men. Uh, what the big hope is, and I imagine um, this character wish is, is shared, you know, across the community that now they're getting this better quality female book more articulated or hyper articulated as they call it on the stream um now is the time for the likes of you know like your Psylocks and your uh, female captain britons and stuff uh, again as an x-men fan obviously i <laughs> gravitate straight to that stuff uh well fredo saying hello to ronin uh john i think it's because they can sp part swaps so many different bits to make a character sometimes the older books get used also penny pinching yeah yeah absolutely um yeah so there we go okay so the carol danvers i think everybody um in chat is of a like mind to me we're all in agreement that's a fantastic figure and we're all probably going to be picking one up although keep your eyes out folks because i don't know uh i was making some notes as the stream was going on and uh no pre-order date or uh, sign of release. Although, uh, just uh, to backtrack a little bit, the Wolverine and the Spider-Man, uh, the superior Spider-Man with the uh, the legs, went on pre-order today. And I noticed on Hasbro Pulse a bit earlier on that the Spider-Man is already sold out here in the UK. Can you believe that? Um, so, yeah, Carol Danvers. Right, next on the list. Well, just staying on Marvel Legends for a little bit longer, folks. Uh, the Iron Fist and uh, Power Man, or Luke Cage, uh, as he was going by at this point in his history. Uh, another one that caught my eye. Uh, I certainly enjoy the uh, the extra articulation on the Iron Fist. I've thought about picking up one of the older ones before and gone, oh, maybe I'll hang on and wait. We'll see. I think I'd read, a, again, a rumour that it was coming down the pipeline. Obviously, great to see these this pair together. Um, the Heroes for Hire, and the, the Defenders looks. The... Uh, Iron Fist, they had a, a ton of hand swaps and a head swap for him and the Flaming Fist stuff as well. So, well, accessorized. Uh, the Luke Cage 2 with the um, uh, the hand swaps with the big Luke Cage rings. I didn't grab that picture from my little window here. but um, So, uh, it's a two-pack, but this is the kind of two-pack that makes sense. This is the sort of two-pack that makes sense because I would... I would posit, my contention would be that anyone picking up um, a classic look Danny Rand Iron Fist like that, or a classic look Luke Cage like that, would want the two. <laughs> would want the two, you know. Uh, and so this is a, a two pack that makes sense to me. Um, I've just seen Eric's comment pop up at the bottom. This is a two pack. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> Aston answered like that, mate. Like that on a wavelength. Um, oh, just to um, John who said the Spidey is sold out on Pulse EU as well. Uh, I mean, they're out. The, the Spider Men they do sell out quick, don't they? Um, so another one's caught my eye. Uh, whether I pick them up immediately or not, I don't know. Um, Carol Danvers will be a pre-order. Wolverine's a pass, even though I like the look of it, and I'm really pleased for those who want or the little X-Men versions of teams, you know, different interpretations of the characters. This one I might hang on for. This is this is the kind of um, keep an eye out on the game, stroke HMV, stroke Zavi kind of sales jobby, possibly. I don't know. I'll have to see what the budget's like in the uh, coming days. Um, but... Yeah, definitely caught my eye, and the uh, uh, and the, the the one of the things I noted down was that the uh, the Iron Fist has got the toes, so you can get him in more kind of, you know, martial artsy moves. You can obviously tell that I'm an accomplished martial artist by that shameless display. Uh, so let's uh, check in and see what's the what, and Jono. Uh, he's also a semi deluxe figure, which sucks. Is that the Spider Man you're talking about there, Jono? Uh, Connor makes a great point here. Remember to check with your local independent retailers. Um, I have actually seen a couple of the UK-based folks that I use, like Convicts and Cocktails, and um, who was it I saw? It wasn't Kapow. 
Kapow aren't really doing pre-orders anymore on Hasbro stuff. It was comics and cocktails. And anyway, I saw them floating around on some of the Facebook groups I was on, advertising, saying, you know, up for pre-order today and stuff. So um, if in doubt, take it to your friendly local collectible store. Hey, everybody. Say hello to Daryl. Daryl's here. Yeah, I really, capitals, want that Iron Fist more than them both. But totally get why they're together. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. I don't, I don't know how long you've been here for, Daryl, but w uh, we were chatting about when a two pack is a, a desirable character and a, a less desirable or even an undesirable char character, you know, paired up. Um, and you're just like, oh man, like we were talking about Miss, uh, my saber tooth and Wolverine at the back here, and say, well, that <laughs> that you know, not many people I think would have wanted that Wolverine particularly, but. Definitely tons of people would have wanted that saber tooth. Loads of people would have wanted a Lalandra, but I think the brood Wolverine is less desirable. Whereas this double pack makes sense to me. It makes sense to me, you know? Um like uh what's another good example? Deadpool and um uh Bob, man from Hydra, makes sense to me as a double pack. Um or patch Wolverine with Grey Hulk makes sense to me. Because, you know, it's a homage to a particular comic book cover, or it's a. Although, actually, they did on the back of the box on that one. Again, I comment on this in the video review, spoiler alert. And please all still watch. Um, that uh, there is a comic book cover inspiration listed on the back of the box. And it doesn't look anything like the artwork on the box of the two characters. In fact, where is the box? What have I done with it? Danny. Uh, this side. So that that's the comic cover there. That they said it was inspired by. And Sabretooth is in civilian clothes. And Wolverine's got no hat or shirt on. Anyway. <laughs> so they make sense to me. It makes sense to me. Uh Eric saying hi to Daryl. Uh, no way, Brood Wolverine is definitely the draw for me over Lalandra. <laughs> Winky face. <laughs> All right, well, horses, horses for courses, I suppose. <laughs> oh dear, what time are we on? Wow, well, I need to uh, pick up the pace a bit here. Uh, so, wow, well, do I? Nah. Doesn't matter if it's over an hour, does it? We're having a good natter. Uh, right then, next on my prepared content, the Ghost Rider motorbike. Now this is um, uh, this is a, a pass for me. I don't really go for the. Um, I'm not much of a fan. I haven't done a lot of reading of the the kind of that little supernatural corner of the Marvel universe. Um, so I don't. I'm not really very up on Blade. I'm not very up on Ghost Rider. Uh, I'm not not very up on uh, Morbius. You know stuff like that. It's just not not a space. I did a great deal of reading around uh, much more kind of clued up on DC sort of mystical occult uh, type characters. Uh, however, there's no denying that that's a good looking set. And they were sort of showing off how the flames also act as a stand and you can do stuff with the flames to do like uh, uh, skid scenes and stuff. The figure actually looks really great. Like Wellsculpt did lots of detail in there. A little bit of fun kind of functionality in the bike and stuff so uh that even though it's a pass for me and is is not a figure that um not a pack i think i would pick up it's definitely um eye-catching you know it caught my eye and i thought all right well fair enough now putting aside all the kind of you know the has lab <laughs> i know there's been a lot of gripes about this figure in connection to the the you know the failed Haslab and all that kind of stuff, I uh, I wasn't really paying attention because I was never going to go in on the Haslab, but I know it's a thing. Um, but yeah, like this one, caught my eye. I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll skip it because it's not really a character that's just. I, I don't think there's fundamentally anything wrong with the figure. It's just not a character that's that I'm a fan of. Uh, but I could definitely see why people are going, ooh, hey, hmm, mm, kind of stuff with that one. So there we go. Um. Right then, let's see where we're at. Okay, still on the uh, the 
Unintended theme of the day, two packs. Uh, Bobby says, the worst two pack I saw from Hasbro was C-3PO's head on a B1 battle droid with a super battle droid annoying to anyone wanting army build. Yeah, although, um, so, our friends over at um, Vern Rantz, Oakhurst Studios, who live streams on a Saturday night, uh, one of the guys on one of his panels said that he'd heard or knew, it might have been Ways, Ways of the Sith who said this, um, the the ba super battle droid was going to come out as an individual character in its own right. So problem solved, I suppose. But then I was also like, well, well then why bring out the two pack? <laughs> What's that all about? You know, it, it just seems very kind of cravenly, uh, you know, cra a craven financial decision to bring out an early two pack with a undesirable, uh, undesirable character to only then release it as a single. Um, which was something I mentioned about the Sabretooth when I, uh, way back when the pre-orders went up, I said to some folks like uh, that I talk to regularly, if they if a, if like a you know Sabretooth turns up in X Men ninety seven, which we should talk about X Men ninety seven, um, if Sabretooth turns up in X Men ninety seven and they they kind of do that in a slight you know with a little bit of a paint job to make it look a little bit more vividly animated colours. On its own, on a card back, I'd be a bit like, Arr! but anyway. Yeah, Connor agrees. Bad idea. Put him off. Serious bullshit, says Jono. The uh, 3PO on the B1. Yeah, couldn't even throw an extra head in for the... Yeah. Uh, Eric's commenting on the, uh, the actual uh, picture-in-picture topic at hand here talking about the ghost rider pretty badass even if it's not for me yeah that, that, that's i suppose that's why i'm bringing it up it was just uh i was like oh yeah that's uh yeah fair play fair play to those legends design people this looks pretty good not for me but i can get why people are excited about it hey gerard's here hello gerard waving hands wave back uh so in on that danny catch ghost rider brilliant great johnny there you go i knew there was people out there who'd be really excited about this one uh kind of saying hello to gerard what's up gerard uh that danny may make me break my no legends rule Ooh, daryl see on the one hand i would say you know if it's a character you really really love and you got fond memories of reading those comic books as a kid what's wrong with having one what's wrong with just you know saying i'm not into this line necessarily but i'll pick up you know, just that one for the collection. Like the Indiana Jones. Uh, the Indiana Jones lines is a great example for me. Um, big Indiana Jones fan, but I wasn't really interested in collecting a big old, or having a big old Indiana Jones display. But I did. I picked up one Indy, and I picked up his dad, Henry Jones, because I, I just love um, The Last Crusade, and I love those two characters, and I've got them up there just hanging out. And I'm like, yeah, all right, that'll do me. You know, well, some of the music stuff, I know you guys uh, know I talk about some of the kind of musician-driven action figures, and I've got odds and sods and collected full lines and stuff. But what I will also say, on the other hand, my man, is that it becomes a slippery slope. <laughs> you know this. You know this. <laughs> you don't need me to tell you. But I'm just I'm just saying it, just in case. Um, so with my Marvel Legends, I've referenced it several times already on this stream. I was all like, I'm collecting X-Men. I love X-Men. I've read X-Men comics since the 90s. Big fan of the cartoon. Big fan of the Jim Lee era all the way through up until um, probably my late teenage years, and then I got back onto the X-Men um, uh, in the sort of mid noughties So I've been all over X-Men for decades and decades and decades, but I picked up that 30th anniversary Captain America, or 60th anniversary Captain America, whatever it was, because I was like, that's a good-looking figure. And Captain America is like, Captain America. And you need a Captain America in your collection. You know what I mean? And I thought I could do some Wolverine and Captain America photos and stuff and some Wolverine, Deadpool, Captain America, you know. And then I went in on that Black Widow. <laughs> and then in a sale, I saw that Hulk. <laughs> the anniversary Hulk. And then I just recently bought the classic look. <laughs> Iron Man and now I'm saying I'm going to pre-order the Carol Danvers so I'm just saying Daryl just for your own good you know it already I'm not saying anything you don't already know because I know you already know but uh, there's nothing wrong with picking up one that you like and you're particularly passionate about random is fine just just be warm my man 
<laughs> At least the first one's not free. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. Uh, let's see what else everyone's got to say. Uh, Ronin is going to check it out. He used to kind of like Danny Catch. Uh, a few folks saying hello to everybody. Uh, Darryl, yeah, the slippery slope is the problem. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> Mojo, Spiral, and Longshot. Yeah, great choices. I picked up um, Spiral and Longshot myself, uh, although I skipped the Mojo, but that was more about space, really, than anything else. Although I was a bit disappointed that the Dazzler was in that triple pack, but Dazzler, another group, that, uh, give me a new female book, Dazzler. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just wet my whistle there a minute, guys. Um, <laughs> three is a collection. <laughs> Picking up just one of famous last words in this hobby. Yeah. <laughs> Sleepwalker, Sunfire, Scarlet Spider, Sabretooth, and Deadpool. Is that your is that your Liberty Marvel Legends collection, is it, Eric? Uh, and where's your Dark Horse? You're a Dark Horse fan. Oh, uh, they're rebooting Dark Horse. There's a new A new Dark Horse comic book coming out. I'm looking, I'm looking around like, you know, an issue of previews is just at my desk in front of me. I'm pretty sure someone Google it quick uh, for Eric, but I'm pretty sure I saw that Dark Horse got a, a new title coming. Uh, but anyway, there we go. There's the Ghost Rider. Let me check my notes. Where am I up to? Uh, there. Uh, so uh, the dates, if anyone's interested, the uh, Astonishing X-Men Wolverine and Spider-Man are up for pre-order today. Carol Danvers is Target exclusive in North America, but no no sign of a pre-order date or anything on that one. Uh, Iron Fist and Luke Cage going up on the 23rd of April. And the Ghost Rider bike is going up on the 30th of April. I suspect some of the others will be um, on the on, on some of those same dates, like the Scar and stuff. But um, I'm not interested in them, so I didn't pay attention. <laughs> so everybody, give, get, spread the word. Let everybody else know. Let, let's, uh, let's all come together and make sure nobody misses the Carol Danvers pre-order. Uh, right, just uh, one last one on Marvel Legends then. So um, while I was away, let's go on to the next one. They did a HasLab update and they showed this pair, the uh, the little giant man and the wasp. And again, this, this is probably a... I don't know if it's a skip for me or not because by rights with my classic Avengers, like New Avenue I'm going down, I should probably pick these ones up. But I don't like the way they look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't put my finger on it, but something doesn't sit right. I'm not into these soft goods um, lab coats. I don't. I don't think Marvel Legends pull them off very well, and they look a bit pants. Let me just uh, feed the bad habit. They look a bit pants. I don't like the wasp heads either of them. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Just, I just, they just don't appeal. But I could totally see why someone who's gone in on the Giant Man Has Lab would go. Hmm. Wasp, get a small giant man. The, the photo opportunities, the things I can do in my dios. So I get it, but I don't know. Is it just me, folks? Or uh, I, don't, I just feel like I've got to be selective. It's another two pack, and they just they just don't quite look right to me. And I can't put my finger on why it is. Um. So yeah, I don't know why I threw that one in. I just felt like I had to balance up all the excitement with something I'm less excited about. <laughs> But I like it in terms of the way they've got sort of complementary uh, HasLab-related purchases. They're in the main line, you know, um, so you're not paywalled from getting a Wasp, for example. Um, or if you want a Giant Man, you can have a Giant Man, but he's just the standard six-inch size rather than the fancy one, you know. <laughs> Bobby says, folks, instead of funding Haslab Giant Man, I think I'm just going to buy a Giant Man outfit from the Spirit Store and play with my Avengers figures. Please take a photo or even record a vid. <laughs> Start a YouTube channel. We would all watch that. I'm sure everyone let Bobby know if you'd agree. <laughs> Daryl, agreed. I know people are loving it, but it's an easy pass for me, even in terms of excitement. Yeah, and I get it. I get why people are excited, because, you know, one of my concerns with the Dragonfly is that, uh, you know, uh, Wild Bill's in there, and I can't, I'd like a Wild Bill figure, um, or uh, they put the Coco in with the Hiss tank. Um, what, well, there's something else. Oh, and they had the uh, Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, um, obviously in the failed Ghost Rider Haslab, although that's 
kind of sorted itself out now again organically through the X-Men 97 line. Um, so I was a bit like, oh, these are characters I want, but they're sort of paywall behind the Haslab. But uh, they've not done that with Wasp here with the Giant Man, and I think I think that's the right choice. I think that's the right choice. It's like the Haslab, it's prestigious, it's premiere. The accessories with that, the unlockables are going to be stuff you can do with the Giant Man figure itself, like with eyeballs and face uh, swaps and stuff. Um, but the the Wasp character and a version of Giant Man, excuse me, got the burpees is going to going to remain available in the uh, main line and i think i think that's the right thing to do uh, and just to kind of close the loop on the gi joe has labs I, I suspect there will be a retro carded wild bill anyway in um uh cartoon color scheme i get the color schemes mixed up uh, but in the cartoon jumpsuit with the with the yellow jacket um and obviously they've already announced a retro cobra commander so uh, so there we go. All right, that's. Uh, I'm going to call an end to Marvel Legends chat there, uh, and I'm just going to jump on over to Operation Monster Force. Here they go. Still not sent me a single figure, but we're like advertising <laughs> new pre-orders coming this summer for like what? Wait, four now or something? <laughs> So this is, I'm, I'm really conflicted over this line. I'm really conflicted. I know some of you guys in chat are heading over to Joe Fest and I'd be very, very, very interested um, if they've got you know figures in glass booths or even you can get your hands on one or anything. Um, you, you know, because they've not delivered even a first figure from the first wave yet and they're just layering on more pre-orders. If you, if you go and have a look, there's like 15 of them now on Big Bad Toy Store. Uh, and this cropped up on their Instagram. In fact, uh, both the uh, Operation Monster Force stuff uh, I wanted to talk about today is on there. And it looks bloody marvellous. It's called Killer Warg. It's a Killer Warg Night Hunter, a big werewolf with a claw on his arm. And I mean, come on. That's badass. It looks amazing. But I'm just like, ugh. You, you, you're untested right now. I don't know a thing. And you, I know they did a few videos a little while back, and I was a bit giddy about the vids. And it does look good, what they're showing, but nobody's had one in hand they've not even shipped on the first wave yet um and we're now taking pre-orders for what wave three or even wave four or you know that that might even be like a deluxe slightly more expensive one you know because it looks taller and beefier and got more going on with it um so it's an interesting one but they look really good <laughs> they look really good um i keep eyeballing them I, every now and again i swing past um big bad toy store just to see if there's been a more detailed release date and not obviously i'm following them on instagram quite closely to see if they put any news out there and um you know nothing's come nothing's come um and i'm pretty i'm pretty sure where are we now april i'm sure i know sometimes they so here's a question like when i see quarter one when people list quarter lot one I think of the calendar year. And so when I see like pre-orders, you know, shipping in quarter one, I think they should be arriving sort of January to March. But for some organizations, quarter one means April, doesn't it? The start of the tax year. So are we now just getting into, you know, quarter one? I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it looks great. It looks fantastic. The stuff, uh, let me show you the next picker. So this was on their Instagram. They've started showing real pictures of uh, the general, or uh, they called him on their Instagram, General Brown, uh, which is a Wave 2 figure. So they're obviously, you know, far along in the prototyping or whatever of... Um, they were talking about the, the paint master um, there. But doesn't that... Look at that for a set. Amazing. The general looks great. Removable hat. The three different heads. Look at that bearded action man style joe colton head over there awesome loads of accessories different sets of sunglasses all the hand swaps in there it looks like an excellent figure and one that could have a place <coughs> in all your military lines you could you know you've your valiverse folks your classified folks we could all get one of these or, or even monster force if you just were going you can get that general and it has a part to play in a display and because they've thrown the head swaps in and the hand swaps in so you could have all all the different styles and designs got a bit of a carl weathers vibe about the face uh on the main one on the core head that's on the 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 
the that picture over there. Um, but even even throwing in a little kind of beardy action man Joe Colton head, what a touch! So um, yeah, looks great. Everything I see is awesome. Fresh Monkey Fiction. I love my Fresh Monkey Fiction uh, Santa that I got at Christmas. Um, although the articulation is a bit more limited than what they're what they're talking about with the Monster Force line. Um, so yeah, really, really conflicting. I have put pre-orders in, um, kind of operating on the, I've gone in on, you know, no deposit, no payment, just, uh, pre-order it on tick and make a last minute decision kind of thing. But I think I will still pick up one because I want, I still want to try one out and then see where I go from there. But then of course the Fresh Monkey Fiction stuff sells out all the time and it's, tricky cost wise because i'm importing them from the states because they're big bad toy store exclusives so i don't know but look at that doesn't that looks really promising and this thing looks really badass <laughs> and loads of them look really awesome and promising and badass so anyway let's have a swing through chat and see what folks got to say about uh the monster force oh just quickly uh bobby another vote in there from wilfredo for the uh, the bobby wald giant man dress up youtube channel <laughs> uh so yeah connor here defo been a long run they should be shipping the first kit by now yeah i mean it's been a long time a long time and i just don't think it's right i know i've said this before like me and eric uh, eric i know you and i have talked about this I, I don't know whether it's been on a live stream or we've just been instant messaging or whatever but i know we've talked about it you really, really, really shouldn't be posting pre-orders for Wave 3 or even Wave 4 if um, if you've not even put your first wave of figures in anybody's hand yet. I just really don't think that's that's right. Uh, Bobby Wald. I like that Monster Force General. I want to get that guy so I can make custom Colonel Sharp. Yeah, absolutely. This is what... So with Monster Force, I'm not going in on the Monster Force line necessarily. Well, I'm just cherry picking a few out. So I like the handful of ones that look a bit old. Uh, Palatoy Action Force, you know, Red Shadows kind of look about them. Uh, the General. Um, I have put a pre-order in for the, 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 like, the CIA agent with the sunglasses and the suit. Again, not not because I'm particularly interested in that character from from a Monster Force perspective, but because you know from a kit bash point of view, and if the head swapping is good with them, then you know you could use that for so much stuff. Um, and the general in particular, I mean that that's just I, I will get the general if there is one I pick up, it will be the general because I'll be like, yeah, I can plant him in my classifieds, I can plant him with my handful of Valiverse or whatever, and, and make good use of it. Uh, are the Monster Force figures made by the same crowd doing the Robo School Mark II? Uh, no, the Robo School Mark II is the Skeletron. But with your LOL at the end there, I'm not sure if... <laughs> I, think, I think maybe you were <laughs> taking the mic a little bit. Um, not out of me, just uh, out of the lines in general. Uh, Wilfredo, I'm on the fence too when it comes to Monster Force. They look great, but are the actual paint apps going to look like the advertisement? Well, yeah, that's the question, which is why I'm saying for the folks in chat who are going to Joe Fest, I'm going to rely on you guys very, very heavily to, um, certainly on, over on the Discord, to report back and let us know if you see some for realsies in a cabinet or whatever, uh, or on a table, what what the word is on that what the word is i mean that that general there with the paint apps is looking pretty good all his medals and insignias and stuff uh you know are done it's looking very very promising in that respect that's always the catch with these crowdfunded lines yeah yeah oh thanks eric yeah don't forget to hit the like everybody uh, let's see what Eric's got to say oh yeah that drives me nuts I think it's even more maddening when it's for a line I'm really anticipating checking out yeah that's it yeah because then, then the impatience starts to set in doesn't it uh, and adds to the level of frustration uh, what's Daryl got to say some of their non-monster look non-monsters look great Joe additions the general will be a general Hollingsworth from uh, G.I. Joe a real American hero 53 is that the general that died Spoiler alert. <laughs> Maybe they're taking so long because of some shared use. That way they can run the molds all at once and then assemble. Uh, no, I th I'm pretty 
pretty sure I read, uh, again, on their Instagram in the comments that the reason things are taking so long is because they are being very thorough and very precise and they don't want to rush it to market um, and find there are things wrong with it. I think they're, they're kind of taking a lesson from you know, like the Valiverse first waves of things and how um, some dodgy limbs and stuff went down there and um, taking their time with prototyping. But then uh, I did see, I do remember seeing that there was a, a comment about their Eagle Force stuff saying that they were also, they'd also been affected by their manufacturing shutting down for Chinese New Year and then there being a problem or something. So I think it's just a you know a, a bit of a melting pot of things all contributing. But the main narrative they're putting out there is that we want to be precise, we want to be thorough, we want to be accurate and present a, a well put together product to the market. So um, obviously time will tell how many layers of truth there are in that. Yeah, that Skeletron Roboscore Mark II is about a year and a half overdue at this stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the comparison you're making, sure. Um, yeah, that is um, uh, taking a while. I was looking at the wolf, the red wolf on there, but Jesus Christ, um, the the shipping was, you know, the six-inch one. I was like, nah, I can't justify that. No, he's the one who didn't die. <laughs> All right, brilliant. So there's Monster Force. Uh, what's next on my list? Oh, well, while we're in kind of military lines, and we mentioned G.I. Joe Classified a couple of times, the Wreckage and Tiger Paw. <laughs> Another tremendous example of the G.I. Joe Classified team's ability to um, just reuse in... Possibly one of the more interesting ways because there's nothing, absolutely nothing new about this set. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> the bike <laughs> and the figure of a beard, of a beard, or the bike hasn't yet, but um, you know, that, that's Firefly. All the accessories of Fireflies as well that are listed. They've just done a new paint app on the head, thrown the Steel Brigade. <laughs> helmet in so he's got something to wear while he's riding his quad bike um and i think that's an easy pass for me i'm skipping this one i don't know about you guys i mean is wreckage um a particular popular character i don't think he is he's not one that uh, when i saw it i was like wreckage who um <clears throat> And, you know, I suppose if you if you were around at the time and you were collecting, uh, t you know, Tiger Force is your thing, is your bag. And, I, you know, I've got a couple of Tiger Forces because I sometimes prefer... I, I mean, I love my Tiger Force... Um, uh, uh, bloody hell, I've just had a total brain fart. I was distracted by the fact my camera's autofocus has gone funny. Let me just readjust that. Um... Jeez, Louise, I've had a total... Who's the Tiger Force character that I love? Oh, my God. What time is it? It's getting late. It's happening, guys. It happens every stream. <laughs> Chris's head just falls apart, and I can't remember basic information. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting one. I mean, obviously, it's reuse in at least a bit more of an interesting way, I suppose, in uh, that, that kind of nostalgia factor, giving us Tiger Force characters for those who were, as I say, Tiger Force collectors back in the day but i don't know i'm just i'm just like a no it's uh, it's the same as the um night force uh shockwave uh, i'm just i don't know reuse this total reuse of this nature with a just a head to toe repaint it's just a bit like bleh. outback thank you daryl i'm just you know of course it's outback jesus christ in fact i put so random side note uh in south africa i bought myself a t-shirt with a tiger on the front <laughs> in homage to Outback. Although I've just seen uh, Jono's comment there. I did also buy the Tiger Force Bazooka because I liked the change of colour scheme. Uh, let's see what everyone's got to say about uh, the wreckage and Tiger Paw. Great for Tiger Force fans, but pass for me. Yeah, so we're of a light mind there. Seems so odd to release a, a new version of the ferret before the original <laughs> version is shipped. Yeah, didn't they do that um, with the Python Patrol... Um, Trouble Bubble as well. Do I remember them going about that the same way? Or roughly the same way? Uh, Wilfredo, the rest colour scheme looks cool, but I'm not digging the Tiger Paw. Yeah, and then you've got to ask yourself the question, 
Um, we're back on that subject. Do you want to buy that whole package when you just want the figure and not the and not the the, the vehicle? You know. Uh, oh yeah, no worries, Daryl. Take it easy. Thanks so much for coming and hanging out, man. Um, I'm coming towards the end anyway. Uh, but yeah, really appreciate you, dude. Thanks for coming and hanging out. You have a great rest of the day. Yeah, so it's just a bit like meh. Um, and not really a kind of G.I. Joe classified uh, pre-order that makes me uh, that makes me particularly excited. And uh, when you think about it now, G.I. Joe classified, so the wave... I've just had notification that my Retro Duke, my Retro Scarlet, and the 60th anniversary stuff is shipping out from UK. I know North America and Canada have had them. Uh, perhaps you guys over in Ireland can tell me what the EU situation is on those. And uh, I've obviously had a quick kick. I posted my review earlier today. Big Boas come, Metalheads come, uh, Techno Vipers come. So that wave's coming. We've then got a whole other wave that I think is coming around uh, August, September time. Is it off the top of my head? Like Jinx and, um, and that lot. But then that's it. We don't... We've got a lot of name-only stuff, but we haven't seen anything further on. Um, in fact, have they got a stream coming up? Maybe they've announced something. I don't know if they're going to make us wait till Yojo June to get a fresh fresh batch of stuff going. Um, so, yeah, so, so something dripping out like that, I'm just like, meh. That's not, that doesn't, that's not got the blood flowing. That's not got any juice going to it. I'm not getting giddy over that, you know. So there you go. Uh, Bobby... Let's have a swing through chat then, folks. Hasbro needs to refigure their email system so they send me the email 15 minutes <laughs> after they release the figure. Oh, no, Bobby, yeah. Uh, um, nothing worse than that, is there? And you get to it, it's like sold out. Or I see people on Facebook all the time, like, I'm, got, I'm trying to check out, well, let me check out. Um, and and it, just, it just makes the whole experience of being an action figure collector not fun then, doesn't it? it just Because uh, just why, why should this be happening? Why should I be getting aggravated? Uh, Ronin says he's already got a decent 112 scale ATV. There you go then. Where, um, so where's that from? Where have you got a 112 scale ATV? Share, share the um, share the um, the wealth, my man. Give us give us the inside scoop on where you can get a good one of them. Uh, Wilfredo, it's a Target store exclusive and it's sold out really fast. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's uh, so for us over in the UK, it's uh, obviously a Hasbro Pulse exclusive, as is the case in the EU. Uh, it's definitely sold out um, on Hasbro Pulse here in the United Kingdom. Uh, and I'm pretty sure it's sold out on US Pulse. I'm sure I saw some people uh, griping about that. Uh, th this this seems to be happening quite frequently. Uh, the question of whether it's kind of uh, manufactured scarcity to uh, generate you know, excitement and regular website revisits from people and such like, uh, I don't know, but... Uh, yeah, that sold out real quick. I'm surprised that sold out as fast as it did. I mean, honestly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Why? <laughs> I've got nothing else for you. Uh, let's have a look what Bobby's got to say. Even though it's a Target exclusive and sold out, I feel like we're going to see a bunch of YouTube videos of people finding it at Ollie's. <laughs> or Ross. Don't forget your Ross. <laughs> yeah, it could well be the case. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's just not one... You know, the Python Patrol, I've gone in on no Python Patrol stuff. Um, I have, you know, tinkered around the edges of Tiger Force, but more about kind of aesthetic choices than than anything else, than, than being a particular Tiger Force subline collector. Um, and keeping my eye on the kind of Iron Grenadier stuff, I think that might be interesting. Um, but again, whether it's, it's something that I, I stick to. Uh, like Night Force, I've not, I've not bothered. I've got Night Force Big Ben because it's Big Ben. I really wanted a Big Ben. Um, and no, no sign of a, an actual kind of mainline release of that in the uh, lighter green colours and stuff. Um, but I've not done like a Night Force uh, uh, tunnel route, wasn't it? There was Night Force, and um, have they done anyone else in Night Force? It was Flint? No, Flint wasn't Night Force. He was uh, that was Tiger Force as well, wasn't it? Um, so yeah, there you go. All right, that's the G.I. Joe classified bit done. Uh, I'm just going to finish up very quickly today, uh, but I'm going to just check in with chat before I start waffling on about it. You guys have been watching X-Men 97. Is everyone up to date? Have you all watched the most recent episode, episode five from last Wednesday? Let, let me know quickly in chat because the, the, the extent and depth of how much talking I'll do on this subject will, will, de will depend on what people's responses are. I'll just pause briefly because I know there's like a 20 second time delay between me and 
you guys in chat actually getting the video. <clears throat> Just a momentary interval while I wait. Um, not up to date, but I can block out spoilers. All right. Uh, well, there, there you go. There, there, it just takes one. That's not up to date. And uh, we're definitely in the statute limitations on spoilers. So I'll keep it spoiler free. But what I will say is, um, so I'm watching X-Men 97. Um, I, I know a lot of people are like really giddy about it, but I actually think so far it's been an experience of highs and lows. Some stuff I've really enjoyed and some stuff I've been like, uh, like in the Mojoverse episode, I was just like, it's a bit filler, really. I'm not sure it's achieved much. Um, and it's not, I don't know, I just found myself phasing out and sort of looking at the phone a little bit through that one, but um, the Goblin Queen episode, I was like, yeah, awesome. And of course, episode one, the fight scene in that. Um, I'm not up to date. <laughs> I'm not up to date because I've been watching that Cold War documentary on Netflix. All right, well, is it any good, Connor? Let's give us a quick review in chat. <laughs> I bet it's really interesting, actually. Um... But episode five, so what happened was I uh, flew back from South Africa, overnight flight. Barely slept on the plane because I'm a tall lad and uh, the guy in front of me just really obnoxiously fully reclined all the way so my knees were pressed up against his chair and then I was just like really frustrated and couldn't sleep. Um, 12 hours from Cape Town to Frankfurt, then two hours in Frankfurt Airport, and then two hours from Frankfurt Airport to Manchester and then all the fucking about the airport, you know, getting through security, picking up your baggage waiting in the cab queue and all that until I finally got home uh, and so I'd set off at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon on Friday and didn't get home until sort of 10 in the morning on Saturday exhausted, sweaty stinky, hungry and so um, but I wanted to power on through I didn't want to sleep and then like throw my body clock all out of whack so I thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to uh, get my telly caught up on I've got um a couple of X-Men 97s to catch up on. Got a couple of Shoguns on Disney Plus to catch up on. That's really good, folks, if you've been watching that. I've got... Uh, what else was there? Oh, so Fallout and Amazon Prime release. Wanted to see that. Wanted to check out that new Sugar with Coraline Farrell on Apple TV Plus. So all, all, all that good stuff going on. And I was watching them and just kind of chilling and snacking and stuff. Um, and... Episode 5 of X-Men 97 came along. I was like, God, that's got a long run time on it. And with the lack of sleep, with the long travel, with everything that was going on, I just wasn't prepared for it. I was not prepared for the emotional impact that that episode had on me. That episode 5 just kind of really bowled me over. Uh, and so I did go for a nap. <laughs> <laughs> that point there but yeah it was a tremendous episode i thought it was really really good and the extra runtime i felt was well used you know you can often find these kind of 40 minute shows can drag a bit can't they but the uh, the extra runtime on that episode was well used so yeah it was just it was just really well put together really effective in the way they closed the episode out and i was like this is this is as good as as good as a you know game of thrones in the beginning or something or you know the, the best episode of The Wire or West... You know, it was up there. It was up there for me. Now, I don't know if it was because of my fatigue, my travel fatigue or anything. Um, but if you're not... Even if you're, like, not not really feeling it or whatever, I think you, you should still check out episode five because it was really well put together and very, very enjoyable. Um, good action, lots of drama, good character stuff. Um, if you are an X-Men fan, then there was loads of little Easter eggs and nods as well to get you going. I just thought it was a really well put together episode. Um, but one I was completely not ready for, especially after watching that Mojo verse episode. Um, let's have a look. So, uh, well, Fredo, I'm still hoping they don't get too woke, full of rainbows and unicorns. Ah, um, you know, whatever, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> it'll be fine. It'll be, <laughs> Have you not read Jonathan Hitman's run <laughs> in the X Men? If you're worried about getting, things getting too woke. Uh, and Jono says, uh, Fallout is a cracking show, Chris. Yes, so uh, I've, um, I'm not done, but I'm a couple of episodes in and really into it. I like Walter, um, uh, Walton Goggins anyway, because a uh, big Justified fan here, folks. Loved um, Justified. Um, so I was going to. Uh, watch it anyway and i played fallout 3 and fallout 4 back in the day so uh but yeah it's kind of got a bit of a cheeky wit about it 
under the surface. It doesn't quite take itself too seriously, but it is serious. Uh, and it, it's walking a very fine tightrope, but very, very well. Um, so that, that kind of black comic humour stuff in there, that dark humour is landing well uh, with that cheeky whip undertone, but it's also like doing the the dark not the dark humor but the dark stuff well it's um well what i've seen so far and i'm hoping it continues all the way through so there you go uh right folks there you go that was it um x-men 97 was just the last thing i wanted to say about because i had to tell someone about how emotionally impacted i was by that on saturday <laughs> Start the presses. Breaking news. Grown man upset by cartoon. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's all my prepared content, folks. That's everything I had to um, um, on, on my notes to to waffle on about today. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. As always, I'll open the floor just for any last minute kind of questions, comments. Uh, anything anyone would like to ask or share with the rest of the viewing community that we're hanging out here together uh, before I close things down and go for a little bit of late supper uh, and a hot, you know, get a cocoa in me and stuff. It's nearly bedtime over here. Well, I'll tell you what I will say. Um, so my, my quick, quick review went up. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen plenty of... Um, Quick kick reviews already on YouTube by now because we're way behind North America. But if anyone is interested, that button should give you a link to it there. So if anyone wants to go check that out, then please do. I can see the view account dropping. So people are leaving. Um, so I'm getting the sense that that's it. Uh, thanks, Connor. So just to close off there, glad you had a nice holiday and great to see you back, Chris. Yeah, cheers. And thanks, everyone, for coming and hanging out. It's been a pleasure as always. Um... Planning uh, now, my holiday's done. I'm planning on trying to keep this in on a Tuesday around the same time at 10 pm. So, uh, keep an eye out on my Insta. I usually put a post, um, sort of within 24 hours, 12 hours, or even a couple of hours <laughs> I did today to give a heads up that it's coming up. Um, but it'd be great if you can come and hang out again next Tuesday, of course. If there's anything that you think of, you think, oh, Chris. Chris would be interested in that, or that'd be nice to hear Chris talk about on his live streams. Then drop me a DM over Insta or something. Um, and let me know if there's anything I can do to enhance this live stream experience. Always open to the feedback. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll say good night. Thanks for coming along, and uh, have a great week, everybody. All right, ta-da.